Once the First World War was over, our troops began their long journey home to New Zealand to be welcomed by their families and communities. However, the real journey back to civilian life was only just beginning. Finding their way back was hard, both physically and emotionally, in spite of New Zealand's best efforts to support them. Eight days after losing your brother, you march towards the enemy. Artillery fire shatters your elbow. Your war is over. Harry came home with an artificial arm. His rehabilitation included 72 days training in shorthand bookkeeping and typing. But office work wasn't for Harry. Instead, he devised a way to dig for Cody gum with his good arm and his artificial limb. He later became a successful farmer. The horrors of war are all around you. Without warning, things go dark. Days later, you wake up in a military hospital recovering from a severe gunshot wound to the head. David's injuries left him with facial paralysis. He returned home deeply traumatised. David survived war and influenza, but lost a brother to each. In 1919, he took his own life. The coroner ruled his death as self-inflicted while mentally depressed. You're holding on to a lifeboat with one hand and a patient with the other. Cramp takes over. It's dreadful, but you have to let him go. Edith survived the sinking of the Marquette and served right through until 1919. She is believed to be the only woman to take up land under the Soldiers Settler Scheme. Almost 10% of New Zealanders served in the First World War. For those who survived, their journeys back took many different routes. The trauma they experienced affected both them and their families in untold ways. These people and their stories are an important part of our history and shaped who we are. We will remember them. Ka mau mahara tonu tato, ki a rato.